Brian, appreciate your time, man. So it's uh, very generous of you to come on and share and help us out here. Um, so for all of us on the call today, I mean, I personally learned a ton from Brian. Brian's the guy that hosted BDM in Chicago um, and helped me understand the deal at the great detail and broke down a lot of the, a lot of the moving pieces for me. So I've learned and, you know, a lot from him and uh, Brian's knocking on a million a month as a, as an agency. And, uh, you know, as one he produced and we're out in the field, you know, Brian, what was your, what was your biggest year? Oh, back then it was only 533, man. <laughs> 530. We're doing a million now. <laughs> <laughs> only five. Yeah, exactly. Because I mean, time, times change. And back when, when Brian was running, you know, lead availability wasn't there, you know, and, you know, just, it was, it was a different system. It was paper apps. It was a lot. No, of no, no. There's no excuses. People are working harder. People are making it happen. Kind of like that four minute mile. Nobody ran a four minute mile until somebody did a million. Now everybody's out doing a million. That's just how it works. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it makes sense. And I'm, I'm just, I guess I'm trying to let these guys know on the call today that, you know, FFL changed for better. And there's, yeah. there's definitely no excuses right now. No excuses, no excuses in the past. However, like we are so blessed to have so many leads and, and, you know, being able to scale the business. It's, it's crazy, but Brian, if you can just uh, kind of introduce yourself and let us get to know you a little bit, where you came from and what, what, what have you been able to accomplish with FFL so far? Cool. Well, first off, Ivan, I appreciate the opportunity to address your team. Um, it's a pleasure. So just to see how you've blown up, man, it's exciting. And I mean, the future is bright for you and anybody else that wants to build a business and get serious with this thing. Um, guys, those of you that don't know me, Brian Mendenhall from the Philadelphia area recently transferred and moved everything down to Tampa. I still have an office up in Philadelphia, but then we have an office also in Tampa as well. Um, joined FFL the very end of 2015. 2016 was my first full year. That was a good year. That was the year I did 533. Um, was the number one producer that year. And then a few years after, you know, we've had number one producers come from our agency, which is pretty exciting. Um, but I've been able to see the company change. My background before this, I was a manager with LA Fitness Sports Club. I literally sold memberships. So anybody could do this. I mean, I was in much better shape. I, I kind of had the outline of a six pack, but I was nowhere near financially free. I was working 70 hours a week for someone else. And for a while I was happy until I started getting threatened. So just the security that I have alone, knowing that I run my own business, I am my own business, and nobody can just say, hey, we don't like you, or you didn't brown those enough, you're out. You know what I mean? That's kind of where I am today. I've been able to achieve executive vice president. We're knocking on the door of a million dollars a month, which is board member. And at this point, Ivan, I'm just looking to change a lot of people's lives, helping a lot of people on my team. Anybody that, that says they want to build a team, I'm kind of pouring into them because that's where it's all at right now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Brian, thank you. Uh, and thanks for saying what you said. Um, definitely learned a lot from you. Um, I don't want to take a lot of time uh, talking about the in-home, talking about the personal production, sales, whatever. Uh, but I think I'll be committing a crime if I didn't ask you at least a couple of questions about that because you're so good. And I think what you're best at is bringing emotion. In the, in the sales process and helping the client through actually getting them emotional about their situation and uh, getting them moving. So can you kind of dive dive a little bit into that and give us a couple advices towards, you know, the in-home, you know, how to communicate to a client? Sure. Yeah. Well, what I would say, guys, is keep this thing very simple. Like realize that our, our strength is in who we are. We're, we're the professionals. So like we've, we're not the person that filled out the form. We're the person going in to fix the problem. We're the doctor, you know? So these people are coming for advice. Keep that in your mind. Um, re really be proactive, like take control. People want somebody to take control. People want to be led. So literally when you go in the house, you take that client worksheet, you dissect and ask all the questions. If you go through and you do your job, they're giving you everything you need to know to be able to help them at the end. Um, one big thing, a lot of people, are, they have a fear of rejection. A lot of agents have a fear of being judged. One thing you realize if you watch any of my training, 
I don't care about being judged. Kind of like Sean. Sean says that, you know, he doesn't care what people think. Eh, I care maybe t- a tiny bit, but in the house with clients, I'm coming to help a family. So if I have to ask the uncomfortable questions, it's to help them. My only job is to leave that house knowing that that family's in a much better position now than when I first walked in. That's, a, that's, that's my job. So sometimes do I have to ask them challenging questions? Sometimes do I get people that are upset and ask me to leave? Once in a while. But for the most part, people actually can see and understand that I actually care about their family sometimes more than them. I'm like, how am I caring more about your family right now than you? And I've, I've asked that in the house before. So Ivan, it's about asking the uncomfortable questions. It's about sitting there and having those awkward moments where you ask them something that is like skin crawling, like it scares the crap out of them and you just look at them and you wait for a response and you can feel the tension in the air. You can cut it with a butter knife. Sometimes it's about doing that to help a family. Yeah, that makes a ton of sense. Well, I mean, some people would say, well, Brian, it's easy for you you're a big guy, you know, you're not afraid. So what would you say, you know, to them? Like, well, why, why does it, it doesn't matter in your mind? I'll be honest. I'll be honest with you, Ivan. I feel like it, it, it's harder for me. I have barriers that I need to break through in the very beginning. I mean, I need to smile real big. I need to be non-threatening as possible, right? I need to make them like me. They need to trust me, which they need to like and trust you also, but you might not be 285, six foot, like, as wide as the door when I'm coming through, like, you know what I mean? So I, I take those shoes off and I, do, I take those extra precautions that I have to take just to get them to start to trust me. And then I have to tell them, hey, I'm gonna be honest with you. And then I can kind of be, I, I can be upfront. So I look at some of these people, I look at some of these women that come in that, that are so small or smaller guys. And sometimes I'm a little envious, man. If I had that, it's like some of the stuff in the beginning, I feel like I can cut. And I can get right to the right to the chase. Does that make sense? So like, dude, it wasn't easy for me anyway. It it took like sometimes like when I was in these houses in the beginning, it was very uncomfortable. And obviously, I got more comfortable with being uncomfortable to the point where it wouldn't be uncomfortable now. But it was in the beginning. And you're gonna get like that too as a brand new agent. You are gonna hear some training. You're gonna be like, you say that. And then we'll be like, yeah, that's what we say to get them to move. And then you're going to say it and you're going to freak out. And then you're going to realize nothing happened. And they thought about it and they said, you know what? You're right. Yeah. And you told them to go grab a check and they went to go get it. And then you're like, he was right. Maybe I need to do that. Was so, that your that impression, Brian? Was that your impression, Brian, when you heard some of the trainings initially, one you got on board back in the day? You Were you the same way or are you kind of like, are you kidding me? So <laughs> I heard Sean on stage say something. And I was like, yo, he says that. I'm like, oh, snap. Can you give us some yeah. of the things that, that some of the wild things you sat in, 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 in the home to get clients moving kind of situation? It's, it's, it's anything that most people wouldn't say. Like whatever you think you shouldn't say is the stuff that you can. Like I'm kind of on the spot with that. But like, I mean, Ivan, I've done crazy stuff like I've heard Sean talk about where I've walked in a house, I've sat down, people act crazy. Well, well, hurry up and get to this, sir. I, I don't know if I need this. Or they say something stupid and I literally have a form that they filled out with their handwriting. And I say, you know what? Hold on one second, please. I'll get up. I'll go walk out the front door. I'll close the door. I'll knock on the door. And they're like, what are you doing? They open the door. I'm like, I just want to make sure I'm at the right house. I'm, I'm at the right place, right? Like you filled this out for my help, right? You need to let me take charge so I can try to help you. If not, I'll go to the next family that might need my help. Or I've done stuff like where someone's like, yeah, I want this, I'm gonna do this. I don't know where my, um, I don't know where my checkbook is. (laughs) I said, you know what, no problem. Let me help you. I've gotten up. (laughs) This is crazy, this is extreme. You know, this is extreme. And I said, no problem, I'll, I'll help you look for it. There's stuff all over. I'll start opening drawers. No, no, I think I know where it is. I've done that same thing. I've done that same thing with policies. That's what I've really done. The policies, I, I don't know where my policy is. No problem. Let me help you find it. It's probably here somewhere. I'll literally get up. I'll start opening cabinets and like, look, and they're like, oh, I think I might know. Hold on. And they go get it. 
another thing, um, and this is this is easy, and I don't know why so many people freak out. I'll give you two more. Another people freak out over this, but dude, I'll get up, I walk in the house, and it'll like the TV will be loud or something, and I'll just be like, yeah, like I walk over and just grab the remote and turn the TV off. Y'all will sit there and try to do a presentation, and the TV is blaring. You don't have their attention, and every once in a while they're gonna look over. See what's on the TV? Oh, yeah, what? I'm sorry. That's another one. One more. You sit down with a husband or you sit down with a wife and the other person don't want nothing to do with you. They don't want nothing to do with you. They ain't coming to the table. And you don't want to be, you don't want to be rude. You don't want to be ignorant. So you do the presentation with a one-legger and the husband and wife is somewhere else. At the end, they come back and mess with you. Me, I'm saying, hold, hold on one second. Yeah, we can't get started till they come. They don't grab them. No problem. Hold on, hold on one second. I walk over to the steps. Hey, Bob. Hey, Bob, come on down. Hey, we had an appointment today. I can't get started till you come. Uh, I don't, I can't get started till you come. I'll wait down here for you. And then he comes down. You don't want to deal with me, but when I'm leaving, he's shaking my hand saying thank you because they both got coverage. Make, that makes sense? Absolutely. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I think, uh, you know, I've learned a lot of this boldness from you and, you know, a lot, a lot of, you know, what we actually should do and how we should stand up for families of the clients we're dealing with. So this is, this is amazing. But my biggest takeaway from all of your teachings and trainings, Brian, was to actually tell stories in the home, you know, and that's, that's massive. And, 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 uh, can you, can you talk to us a little bit, a little bit about that? You know, how, um, you know what, what 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 that means and why why stories move and stories sell and not not if you you know how good the product is and and not how you know you're gonna tell people something about how stories is very powerful. Can you dive into that for a second? Sure. I mean, I, I mean, everyone knows the story sell, but I use stories like you seen the stories that I use in my you know the call of close. Um, I even tell stories about how I worked at LA Fitness. Every story works, but. I tell stories for them to know me, to know who I am, but then to, to drive a fact home, like where I tell the story about my aunt Tina, you know, losing her work coverage. For the, you, do you want me to run through the stories for people that haven't heard it, Ivan? Because I, I don't know. That's that, not, that can take some time. Yeah. We, so for, yeah. for example, like I, I tell a story about my aunt Tina where, you know, she loses her coverage because she gets sick. And that's, that story is just a really hit hard and go real, real hard on work coverage is not yours. And, and that's, if I'll be honest with you, that story is probably sold. That, that story is probably sold more insurance than a lot of, because a lot of people use it. How many times you've been smacked in your head, you're going through the whole thing. And because you didn't use the client worksheet, right? They say, I got this work policy, I'm covered. You know what? I think we're going to hold off versus they heard that my aunt Tina had $300,000 worth of coverage. She lost her job. She lost her coverage. She died with no insurance. Do you understand why that's not yours? And now, is that going to be a problem? No. Um, the other story about, you know, Bob and Mary, whatever, the driver's license, the bloody driver license story. I use that story because, I mean, that story can hit home for anyone because that happens 100 times a day. 100 times today and yesterday and the day before, Someone's going to die in a car accident and not make it home. So that story is relative. It makes sense. And you can actually share it with people and let them see, hey, this could be you. Do you have a plan? What's the plan if that was you? If you died yesterday, where's your wife now? And you can kind of just make it real. See, what y'all got to realize, like, we don't sell, like, we're not selling cell phones. We're not selling water bottles. Like, you can't touch life insurance. You can feel what it's like. Maybe if you weren't here anymore, you can tell stories or ask them to even tell you stories about when you've lost a loved one. What did that feel like? Did they have coverage? You've seen it both ways. If they've seen it with coverage, then that's amazing. They know what the, what the power of life insurance can do. If they've seen it without somebody having insurance, they've seen what like, having no life insurance can do both ways sell. Does that make sense, Ivan? It's not only making sense, but as you said, you know, that, that story with your aunt Tina, how many times it was used. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie to you, Brian. As soon as I heard that, I used that in every single 
presentation. And I've issued, with the help of you and a lot of top other top producers that I've learned from, I've issued over 500K first year, almost 700K second year. I haven't missed telling that story once. And, and diving a little deeper, if you don't mind, I know it can be very emotional to you, but I, I just destroy work insurance with that story. I just, I just tell them, what if you get sick? How long do you think you're going to have that life insurance with your job? Well, I don't know. And I tell them the story. So, and, 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 and it just, I don't know. I just, I don't know how much money we all made using that story. It's, it's crazy. And I know it's a sad story, but you know, we had. Yeah. Here's, here's what I tell you, man. I mean, I've had so many people come up to me and say, Hey, I've used it, but I've given everybody permission. Like my, my aunt Tina is, yeah, you know what I mean? Like you, your business partner, hey, your business partner, this is what happened. You guys all have permission to use that story and um, help a family, you know what I mean? So powerful, man. And that, that story changed so many lives, so many families, it's, it, it's crazy. It's just insane from, from you know, from, on both sides, you know, I, I, I don't know, like that's, that's great, man. Uh, and I, I appreciate you letting us talk about it and share that, but, uh, Brian, let's let's just uh, switch gears a little bit here and talk about building, right? So I think you're on the move, you're on the mission, you're on the go, and, and the deal is popping. And I, I just I just see FFL Central Division everywhere, you know, all all over the chat. You guys have new writers coming in steady every um, every single week. But but you know, talk to us a little bit about you know why building, why recruiting is the answer. You know what what moved you to actually start building an agency. That's funny you say that. I don't know how many new people you got on here, but don't make the same mistake I made, that Wayne made, that even you, Ivan, we all made the same mistake. None of us recruited from day one. All of us were, you know, go out and sell, kind of build this, uh, go go out and sell and make money. That's the, that's the number one, I tell you, Ivan, that's the number one gift and the number one curse. That I was just, I was so just much on the damn money. I was just on the phone with an uh, agent from coming from an agency with 40% comp where, you know, recruiting is their job in that agency. And I tell them, here's the deal. Here's why I haven't started recruiting right away. Here's, I don't want you to make that mistake as well, because you start making so much money with this person production, crazy comp that you get dizzy and you don't realize what to do with that money, that, but you have to put it back in the business. So I'm sorry for interrupting. Uh, you no, know. no, you're good. You're, you're good. That's like, that's like everyone's number one thing, dude. If everybody can just say, hey, it's not all about me because actually it's about other people. The money that you're making is cool. But then I started thinking about it. I'm like, dude, I literally, that year that I did 533, Ivan, like nobody really knew what I did. Like you could have, you could have thought I sold drugs. You didn't know what I did. I literally was private. I wouldn't put a post up. <laughs> I didn't tell nobody. I bought, I think the year before, I think that year I bought a new house, a couple cars. Like people was like, yo, what do you, eh. but here's the deal. I look back at it now. I was so selfish. It was so, it was just the wrong thing to do. I, like, think about this. How many people, and you don't ever know, and you know, people are not people are not genuine when it comes to being vulnerable and telling you what they actually going through. So, like, think about how many friends you know right now that you think they're doing good. They live they live like they're keeping up with the Joneses. They they you look at them sometimes like, dang, they doing good. I wish I you know maybe I wish I was like them. They're sitting at home miserable, hating life looking for another opportunity and you don't even have a clue because you didn't even offer it to them. Guys, I, I, I tell it and I keep saying it over and over. I'm going to keep saying it. Our opportunity is like, it's like the best, it's like the best gas that's available at the gas station. It's unlimited, but it's only a dollar a gallon, guys. Everywhere else is three, four dollars for the premium, right? Ours is a dollar, but we're not telling people about it because we think it's going to run out. It's unlimited. You need to tell as many people as possible about this opportunity, because guess what? They running on E. They're paying $3, $4 a gallon. It's a, it's a dollar a gallon here, and it's unlimited. How many people can take advantage of that opportunity? That's how I look at it now, man. And I, I just look at it like, 
I'm not being selfish about it anymore. It's not about me. Am I a private person? Uh, yeah, if you know me, you know I'm private. But am I starting to get out there and just share it? Because it's, it's, it's not fair not to. How many, think about this, man, this is the messed up part. How many people are at these other companies getting raped and pillaged? How many people is that 30, 40%? If I knew what I know now, man, if somebody offered me a 55%, I would literally take my fist and try to punch it in the mouth. We're starting people at 90%. That's, that's double. <laughs> Does that make sense, man? Like I'm, yo, I wish I'm, I could start over. I I'm wish good. I could start over. I mean, I wish I could start over. I promise you. I look at where I am now and it's like, all right, what if I would have started doing this back in 2015 and 2016? How many more thousands of people could I have affect, could I affect it? I know I yeah. helped a lot of people with training, with sales and all that, but how many more thousands of people would I have already helped? How many people wouldn't have been taken advantage of at another opportunity and I would have been able to take them and show them how to really do it here? The good part is it's not too late and I can start now. And another, another thing, Ivan, like it, when it comes to recruiting, I promise you, it's not like about what's in my bank account at this point, because I'm good. Like, I'm good. I make, I, make, I make way more money than I ever thought I'd make in my life. It's not about the money, because if it was, I'd probably be in Aruba somewhere. You know, that's my favorite place, right? But it, by, bottom line is I'm still working, because it's about other people. It's about how many other people I can help. At this point, I'm, fi I'm fired up and I'm telling everybody about integrity. It's about how many people can I actually, I'm getting a deal with integrity. That's already a given. How many other people can I get a deal with integrity? How many other people can I introduce and show, hey, you know what? You, you, you and your kids can live a different life than you ever thought. I think about Kyrie and that, like I'm, I'm from the, the suburb, I'm from Trenton, New Jersey, which is the hood. My mom got some money, got, got us moved over to Yardley, which is not the hood. I was the only black family growing up there, right? And like, we basically were like the poorest, but we were living in that area. So we were all right. Does that make sense? Kyrie is from Philadelphia, like North Philly. You know what I mean? From like, where they don't have nothing there. You know what I mean? And to see this guy go, he can take him, his wife, his kids, get an integrity deal, become a multi-million dollar, multi-millionaire within a few years and go from where he was and where he grew up to now his kids are private school. His kids live a life that he never thought they'd live. That's, that's game changing, man. Crazy. We, got an opportunity, we got an opportunity that some people are gonna squander and take for granted and get left behind. And then some people are gonna take advantage of it like Dave Witcher and that guy in 15 months having to deal with integrity. That's different. Hey, remember that four minute mile thing that I brought up? Remember that? Yes. Dave Witcher set a million dollars in 10 months, integrity deal 15 months. You're gonna start seeing people hit it faster. I'll you're you're gonna start seeing people hit it faster. And I'm screaming that right now, bro. Remember the four minute mile? Remember the four minute mile? We're gonna see. Remember the 15 months? We're looking at 14. We're looking at 12. And I'm trying to hire some of those people. The funniest thing, I heard somebody say it. Maybe I heard Sean say it. He said, the biggest person with, um, with Family First Life probably didn't even start yet. Imagine that. What if you hire that person? What if, what if you hire that person that just come and just go crazy? Right? That, I, that's crazy. Yeah, 100%. I couldn't agree more with that. So a lot of... A lot of good points here. A lot of energy. We appreciate it. So I see Wayne. And, and, I see Wayne in the back going crazy. Wayne, like <laughs> <laughs> Wayne's on the roll. Uh, so and yeah, what well, Desmond pointed that out just through the comments here. Unlimited. Wow, never looked at it like that. Awesome. That's what Desmond just texted here. I think that was my biggest hang up as well. And you said that too, Brian. Because, I mean, I'm going to expand here a little bit because at the end of the day, I think mentally that's what stopped me because I, uh, I work the leads in my area. I traveled here and there and I'm like, okay, like if I hired 10 more agents, how, how are they going to get leads? And I mean, we went through new lead types how many times in the last three years? It's just insane. I mean, I think the leadership is crazy. They're willing to literally work as hard 
you know, as they do and, and even harder year, year in and year out, you know, so we have opportunity for new leads so we can get unlimited leads so we can keep building. So the records are broken. So this is, I mean, you just got me pumped too, Brian. So it, it, it's just insane. And yeah, maybe the, the best, you know, the record breaker in the FFL history haven't even started yet. I truly believe that. So records are going to be broken. So, and that, Ooh, <laughs> that's, that's insane. But Brian, I'm going to ask you one, one more question because I'm going to be respectful of your time and, other people's time on this call because they probably want to ask you some questions as well. Some of the people on the on the call going right now, yeah, this is this is all great, guys, but uh, I need to verify everything for myself and uh, I need to start selling like you guys do before I even start doing anything on the hiring side. So, what would you tell them? So you understand if a guy if a guy is brand new, correct, and he says I'm not I'm not doing any hiring until I'll figure it out. Correct. Yeah, I, I, we do have people on the call that I know personally that I spoke with. They're like, "Yeah, heck yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I wanna, I wanna build, I wanna build the team from day one." And they, they bringing agents on board from day one. There's some people on the call today that probably going, "You know what? Until I learn how to sell, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, you know, do anything with recruiting. I would like to own the company. I'd like to get a deal with Integrity, but I, I I'm still kind of testing and checking things out. Why? Well, what can you tell them? Well, first off, I, I just say like. Get out of your own way. First off, remove your head from your butt. Okay. <laughs> Sorry to say it like that, guys, but you're you're being selfish. You're being bullheaded. And that's just not the right way to look at it. Like it's not about you. It's about other people. What if you end up sucking at this? I'll be honest. And he probably wouldn't be mad at me. I love Mike Killing. That's my boy, yo. That is my boy. I love him to death. But he sucked in the field. He was horrible. Can I tell you another person that sucked in the field is pretty bad? 30, 40% closing ratio? That's not good. Andrew Taylor. Right. Those are two guys that were not good at all. And those are the two biggest guys in the entire company. What if you happen to suck, but you got a heart for people and you care about helping other people? So you just introduced some people to this business and you happen to introduce a Ivan, a Wayne, a Mark Mead. Uh, whoever this person's name is that has, they don't have a name yet. A Colin Cook, a Charles Winter. Like, you know what I mean? Like if you hire that one or that two or three people, you're going to change their life forever. And guess what? If they end up being where they need to be, automatically you just end up where you're supposed to be for doing the right thing. So just don't make it all about you. Make it about other people. Other people are looking for an opportunity I heard a story and this is, this is the truth. And I actually hired this guy. I'm not going to say who he is or anything. He actually did a podcast and talked about it, but he told me like the month before I talked to him, he was about to kill himself. And I showed him a new opportunity. He was able to put 30 grand in his bank account in a few months. His wife was about to leave him or actually did leave him. He was end up, get, end up getting her back. Like all this stuff happened. He told me if literally, if he didn't find this opportunity, he had about three, four nights where he had the gun in his mouth about to kill himself. And because of this, he's still here. Like, tell me that ain't God like helping somebody out. I'm not like the person that's going to preach to you, but what if I was selfish and just said, yeah, I'm going to wait till I figure it out. What about that? That is powerful, you know I mean? Brian. That's, that's crazy. Yes. And I, uh, yeah, besides, besides, you know, that, that, that this is great, man. Uh, but yes, you brought up some names here. I mean, I, I guess I can, I can continue. Uh, I think to me, the brightest example of all, I, I get it. Mike, Mike Kilomet, Andrew Taylor, without a doubt, without a question, but what about, what about Trey Honeycutt? Never really sold. I mean, he sold some, but he, didn't, I mean, they, they sucked that, you know, the, the closing, closing ratio was not good for both Mike and, and Andrew, but, with uh, Trey Honeycutt, we didn't even see the volume from him. You know, maybe he was somewhat good, but he didn't run many appointments, but he just focused on recruiting. He had that vision and, you know, like never really, I don't think he ever sold more than 150,000 in, in, in the given year, which is like a fraction of what you did, fraction of what JP did, fraction of what Steve Giordano is doing right now. But, uh, but uh, hey, he ain't mad at, at himself and what he's got right now. And, you know, most importantly, how many people he helped. 
right? So that's that's just crazy to me. But uh, I'm going to get out of the way, guys, and let you ask some questions from Brian. And uh, we're going to turn it into Q&A. Uh, appreciate you all being here. Brian, appreciate you as well, man. Definitely. You guys want to go ahead and mute yourself. If you have a question or type it in the chat, I'm going to read it. Ivan, typically I do such a great job. Nobody asks questions. No, I, I was trying to figure out how to unmute. I was trying to figure out how to unmute myself. Um, how you doing, Brian? I'm Craig. Um, hey, Craig. How you doing, buddy? Good, good, man. I asked the same question to Rob um, last week. So, um, and you seem to have the similar personality. So, how do you discern whenever you're talking to someone? It sounds like you talk to a lot of people, but how do you discern immediately that this is somebody I want to bring on? Or this is somebody that I want to just let go. I don't. I don't want. To, I don't even want to go this with this conversation any further than this person. Well, first off, I mean at this point, and I don't care if you're day one, Craig. You, I go by feeling. Like if I feel, if I have spidey senses, I, I call them my spidey senses, bro. If I got a bad feeling about you from the beginning, then it's probably not going to work. Like I'm going to work with people that I like. Right. So like when, when I when I say bring people on and help people out. I'm not saying bring on people that you hate and bring on everybody. Don't right. bring anybody in your business that you can't deal with. Does that make sense? Yep. If it's super hard trying to work with someone, then move on to the next person. What I'm saying is just give somebody an opportunity. Does that make sense? But if, Craig, if you got a feeling like, just like, do you, you have any staff yet? No, no. I, I just, I, I just, okay. I, I just started. Just got my contracting. I, I brought on an agent yesterday. That's, um, that's fine. So. I asked. I only asked you for a reason. The reason why I asked, do you have staff? Is the first time that you feel like you need to fire someone? Fire them. Don't oh, let I them hang out. I got twenty time. years with the railroad. But, I'll no, fire no, somebody. But, I ain't scared. So what, I, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, it's the same thing. If you get that feeling that they're they're not a good fit, they're not a good fit. Make make sense. Right. 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 Thanks. Thanks for the question, Craig. All right, we got one more from Nehemiah. So Nehemiah wants to know, here's his question. I'm going to read it, how, it how, how he typed it. How do you recruit without already being a Hall of Fame producer? <laughs> it's called, it's called, is he on, is he on the phone? Where, where is he? Joel? Oh, I'm sorry that he's up around. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to ask him to unmute and turn on the video. What's up, Joel? Yeah, I'm right here. Bye. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. Hey, hey man, you doing? so listen, um, 90, actually, 90, 95% of the company is not Hall of Fame producers, right? But because there's so much success, so many people winning, you got to use the videos. You got to talk about other people. It's called edification. You know what that means? I'm not, not being silly. You know what that means? Yeah. So ba yeah. basically, I, I would, I work with Ivan. So, hey, you know, I'm just brand new with this. I'll be honest, I'm, I'm all right. But I'm looking at these guys, they're killing it. They, we have Steve Giordano, this guy did a million dollars. We got Ivan, we've got Wayne. This guy's one of the best trainers I've ever heard. Like edify and talk about other people. Start posting the stuff on your social media, send stuff out. Like it's not all about you. Even if you, if you look at any of these people like Wayne, Steve, like some of these people, if, if you look at the people that are successful, they're not like, Oh, look at me. I'm killing it. Come see what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're shouting out other people. So you need to continue to just shout out other people and not make it about you. Then it doesn't matter what you do. Now, it still does matter that you go out and sell. Because if you're out of business, then you're out of business. Well, the number one rule in business is to stay in business. All right? Appreciate you. No problem, boss. Awesome. All right. <laughs> We got more for Brian. I think Colin's trying to ask something, but I can't really hear him that much. Yeah, I was trying to ask something. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm doing good, Brian. Doing good, man. I appreciate everything you do, man. Uh, you're a good example. Question I have is uh, he, kind of, he kind of answered part of my question. Hold on one second. Let me get. Uh, hold on. Let me, let me. Hold on. Let me mute. You got to mute Wayne. Okay, go ahead, yep, buddy. Yep. Go ahead, Colin. Yeah, uh, he you kind of answered he kind of asked my question already, but it was in regards to how do you 
really recruit and be that example without being a Hall of Fame producer. And um, you know, I know I'm on the way. I'm on that. I'm on that trajectory, but I got a lot to learn, and I'm putting my work in the best I can right now. But the question, the, the additional question I have, is like you're responsible for those agents that you bring on, and if you're not, you know, an upper level like experience, I've never done insurance before. So, like when they have those questions, those those like the build chart and certain basic things like that, would you say you just basically just need to study up and get your get your get yourself strong in those areas as far as qualifying clients. So you can, cause you want to help those people. You don't want to just bring them on and like me pushing them away and or pushing them to Ivan or somebody, you know what I mean? So Colin, I understand what you're saying, but I'm sure Ivan has a system together where a brand new agent comes in. Your job is to sell like crazy. If you bring somebody in, one of your managers is going to help you out until you're ready. Now your job is to go and learn the underwriting guys to keep them with you. And you're probably calling people for the first few weeks. Now, once you're up to speed and you're able to start helping other people, then yeah, you can. But in the beginning, that's not your job, bro. I don't think Ivan told you to come in day one, hire people in, train them. That wouldn't make a lot of sense. You'd be shooting yourself in the foot. You don't know everything. Your job is to get them to somebody that knows it until you know it. Does that make sense? I want to intervene here as well. And I, I don't think I know all the underwriting guidelines. All I know is how to find them, you know, and at the end of the day, if you work with agents, they're all independent. All you, all you, all you got to do is to you, I, I mean, Colin, you sitting, you sitting with a client, you probably know how to find the, the guidelines. So all you need to know is how to find them and, and, you know, defer people there saying, okay, here's where you go and here's how you find them. If they not able to take in that direction, follow it and, and, and figure it out. I mean, they're probably never going to. So, I mean, and you shouldn't worry about it. They should That's just keep it. That is true. That's true too. So, but, uh, all right. So do we, do we have more, more stuff for Brian? Any, any other questions, guys? I think Wayne has something. Yeah, I'm muted for a second. I think he's back on the phone. Yeah, I think he is on the phone as a matter of fact, but, um, I just want to be very respectful of Brian's time. If we don't have any other questions, all good. And, uh, you know, we can just uh, clap and, and and say thank you, Brian, because, I mean, I, I straight up, man. I know I, I, I told you that before, and I'm, gonna, I'm not going to get tired um, saying that. Thank you, man. Thanks for booking that trip to Chicago three years ago and coming over with just – two people in the room and, and train and uh, bring me up to speed. I, I mean, I could not express how, how grateful I am to you for actually teaching me a lot of these things, man. Thank you. Appreciate you. Well, you, you just, you just keep killing it, man. And being an example, leaving from the front, that's all you got to do. I appreciate you too, Ivan. Y'all take care, man. Take it easy.